Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing four easy and delicious dinners that I have recently made for my family. So first up, I'm making some French dip sliders with fried potatoes. So starting off with the sliders, I grabbed this package of King's Hawaiian Sweet Rolls. I went with a 12 count, that is the perfect amount for my family. But if you are a larger family or you wanna make these for a party or event, you could easily double or triple this recipe. Recipe. But you do want to get these cut in half with a serrated knife. I have never been able to do this correctly. I always make it uneven. So if that is you too, don't sweat it. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, but to a 9 by 13 casserole dish, I've sprayed it with Pam, laid the bottom half of the rolls in there. Um, I'm going to layer it with some thinly sliced roast beef, some provolone cheese, and some of these garlic pepper crispy onions. Next, I'm gonna grab a half a stick of butter and melt that down in the microwave. The original recipe called for a full stick of butter, but I didn't really think that was necessary. Um, I'm also gonna grab a packet of au jus gravy mix and add in one tablespoon to the butter. I'm also gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce and garlic and onion powder. I'm gonna get that mixed together really well and I'm just gonna brush these over the top of the rolls. So that butter is going to not only give these great flavor, but it's also gonna help to toast it up nicely as well as make it like golden brown. And then all those seasonings, it's just what's gonna make it over the top. That au jus gravy mix definitely gives it a really unique flavor. Um, I started by brushing it on, as you can see, and then that was just kind of taking too long. So I eventually just kind of poured it over the tops and spread it out. And this is what I'm talking about. If I use a full stick of butter, it would have been way, way too much because even a half a stick was a little bit too much. You probably could honestly get away with two tablespoons of butter, but I'm gonna bake that at 350 for 15 minutes. I'm gonna take the rest of that gravy mix and add it to a small saucepan, as well as two cups of water. And then I'm just gonna take that on over to the stove and bring it to a bowl. Then I'll turn it down to the simmer until it just slightly thickens. So that's what you're gonna dip the sliders in. But here they are as soon as they come out of the oven. They are looking so delicious and just look at that cheese pool everything about these is just perfect I'm also gonna quickly show how I make my fried potatoes. So I had this bag of yellow potatoes that I wanted to finish off before they went bad. We haven't had fried potatoes in a while and they sounded really good. So I just add a good amount of olive oil to my skillet, um, a little bit of butter. And while that's heating up, I prepare my potatoes. So I wash them well. I normally do russet potatoes and peel the skins. This was my first time doing it with yellow potatoes, but I loved how they turned out. So I would do it again. Um, I chop these different every time I make them but on this day I cut them in half lengthwise and then just slice them up into little half circles so I got all of that thrown into my skillet and I'm gonna season it generously with salt pepper onion and garlic powder and lorry season salt I also season these differently every time I make them it's never the same which I love um, but just use whatever seasonings in this that makes you happy I do have this on about a medium heat and I I come in every now and then and give it a stir, but I like to let them get about like half of the potatoes crispy, and then I'll add a lid, turn the heat down a bit. That way they don't all get like too crispy and it just makes them nice and tender. And here is my plate. Um, I do put ketchup over top of my fried potatoes. Um, I just did that after this clip. But y'all, these sliders turned out so good. This was my first time making it and it was a huge hit. It's definitely going on our list of favorites. They were super meaty and cheesy and seasoned so well. And we loved dipping these in that au jus. Um, it's just such a simple meal to throw together, but it tastes gourmet and I had every intention of trying it with the crispy onions but I grabbed from the wrong side because I forgot but Josh loved them. 
Next up, I made chicken and rice in the Instant Pot. Chicken and rice has always been a family favorite, so I love trying out different recipes for it and different cooking methods. So I'm gonna start by hitting the saute button on my Instant Pot. I'm gonna wait for that screen to read hot before I add anything to it, including my oil. Um, otherwise, everything will stick horribly to it. I have learned that the hard way but I just added in a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of butter. Once that melted down and was nice and bubbly, I'm gonna add in some shredded carrots. So this was two carrots that I have peeled and I just ran it across my little box grater. And I'm gonna saute that for just a few minutes. I am gonna season the carrots with some salt and some onion powder. If you like actual onion, you can chop up a whole one and just saute it in with the carrots. So I'm also gonna be adding in my chicken. This was two boneless skinless chicken breast that I just chopped into small pieces. You could use thighs if you wanted to or even chicken tenders. I wanted to stick to the original recipe, so I just seasoned the chicken with salt and black pepper. I do wish that I added in additional seasonings though because it was just a little bit bland, at least to us, but I fixed it in the end, and I'll talk about that in a little bit on how I did that, but I cooked the chicken for about five minutes, just stirring it every now and then, and I'm going to add in this whole box of chicken broth, which is four cups. This is the rice that I use. It's some jasmine rice, and the recipe said to leave it unwashed. I have never seen a recipe say that, but I trust the person who created this recipe and the rice turned out amazing. So all was good there. Lastly, I'm gonna take a whole head of garlic and slice it in half and place it on top. Um, the bottom half didn't work out so smoothly. It kind of just all fell apart, but I made it work. I'm gonna get my lid added on and I'm gonna make sure that valve is set to the ceiling position. I'm gonna come over and hit that manual button and I'm gonna crank up the time for 10 minutes. As soon as I hear that, beep i'm going to come and do a quick release which you just slide the valve over if you are new to the instant pot world you want to make sure you let out all of the steam and wait for that pin to drop or else it can be dangerous i've never experienced that though thankfully but now i'm going to come in and take the garlic out if you want it to you can squeeze it in the dish and just stir it. It will melt like butter. It comes out so soft, but I decided to serve it on the side. I did put a ton in my bowl. It was so good. That was the coolest part about this recipe. I have never done that before. But here, I'm just taking some Parmesan cheese that I shredded up and adding that on top, as well as some parsley that I chopped up. I am not like too familiar with fresh parsley. I've used it a couple of times. I use dried parsley all the time, but it's something that I really want to like. We do like it. We just don't love it. But I used to say the same thing about cilantro and now we love it. So I like to be a little bit of interest sometimes and try some things out of my comfort because I know our taste buds are constantly changing. But anyways, here is my bowl. I topped it with some pepper, some extra Parmesan and parsley, and the rice turned out amazing. Um, the number one thing that I love to cook in my Instant Pot is rice because it just creates the best texture. Um, the carrots, you couldn't even tell that they were there, so it's a great way to sneak in veggies to your kids. Like I said before, the chicken was just a little bit on the bland side for us. I do know that chicken and rice is supposed to be pretty simple, but we needed a little extra something something, so we just drizzled our bowls with some A1 steak sauce and stirred it in. I didn't show that, but it did make it so much better. I would definitely make this again, just tweaking some seasonings next time. On this night, I finally tried out a recipe that I've had pinned on Pinterest for a long, long time. These are mini barbecue bacon cheddar meatloaves, and holy moly, this was hands down our favorite recipe in this video. So in a mixing bowl, I have two pounds of ground beef. I'm going to add in six ounces of chili sauce, two eggs that I have slightly beaten. I fried up about five slices of bacon earlier in the day and crumbled that up. So I threw that on in with a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. I'm seasoning this with onion and garlic powder, Laurie seasoned salt. I'm going to do a little bit of mustard and a lot of Worcestershire sauce. Lastly, I'm just going to add in about one to one and a half cups of some shredded sharp cheddar cheese. And then I'm just going to get in there with my hands and mix that pretty well. I don't want to over mix it, but I mix 
makes it just until everything looks incorporated. So now I'm just going to take out a good hunk of that meat and just shape it into a little mini loaf. This should make eight good size loaves and I'm just going to place that on my cookie sheet. Next, I'm just going to take my thumb and press a little indent in it and then you're going to want to grab your favorite barbecue sauce. Sweet Baby Ray's has been a staple my whole life. Uh, you want to drizzle a good amount of the sauce on and then just take a brush and brush it all over the tops and side of the meat. That's going to go in the oven at 425 degrees for 25 minutes and then you want to flip the broiler on for just a couple of minutes to like caramelize that barbecue sauce. I should have cooked this on either tin foil or parchment paper wasn't really thinking, but I served this with just some box scallop potatoes. I have not bought those in years and they were so good. I have definitely missed that. And also just some green beans, but these little meatloaves, oh my goodness, the flavors were just out of this world. We knew it was going to be good, but we did not expect to love it as much as we did. If you are not a huge meatloaf person, I guarantee if you make this recipe, it will change your mind. Most definitely a new favorite and the leftovers are just as good. Now, the last three recipes were all new to us, but this one right here is tried and true. This is an Olive Garden copycat chicken gnocchi soup. So to a large pot, I'm going to start by melting down a couple tablespoons of butter, a little bit of olive oil. I'm going to add in about a half a cup of chopped celery and then a full cup of some shredded carrots. I also chopped up some fresh garlic and I'm just seasoning everything with some onion powder. Just like with the chicken and rice, if you want an actual onion, chop it up and saute it with the carrots and celery but I am going to cook that for a few minutes just until it starts to get tender. Then I'm going to add in a quarter cup of just some plain all-purpose flour. Mix that in really good and let it cook down for a couple of minutes. This is what's going to thicken up your soup later on. I'm going to be adding in this full container of half and half. Yes it is a lot but it is what is going to make this soup so good. So make sure that flour gets blended in really well with a half and half. Let that cook until it starts to get bubbly and start to thicken slightly and then you'll want to go in and add in this full container of chicken broth. I am using a lower sodium version. Now I'm going to season it up. So I'm starting off with some sea salt but any salt will work. Lots of black pepper. Um, I'm going to do some dried parsley. A little bit of thyme because we're not crazy about it and just a couple dashes of nutmeg. The nutmeg in my opinion is very necessary in this soup. It just tastes so good in it and you're going to add in as little or as much spinach as you want or if you don't like it just leave it out. I did chop it up. I added in about a half of a rotisserie chicken that I shredded and then I'm going to add in this full package of gnocchi. I don't know the best way to do this without splashing and making a mess, but you're just going to cook that according to the directions on the back. It should just take a couple of minutes, but once you let that simmer for a bit, that is it. So, so easy. Um, I'm going to show you how we serve it up. We just like to top it with some freshly shredded Parmesan cheese. That is a must. Serve it with a garlic breadstick to kind of soak up the broth and then just some more black pepper. That is it. So cozy and comforting. Tastes so good. We absolutely love soups and this is just one of our favorites. So that is all I got for today's video. I really hope that there was something in here that you would like to make. I want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I will see y'all in my next one. Bye guys.